शुक्ला ब्रह्म विचार सार परमाद्याम जगत व्यानी वीणा पुस्तक धारिणी मभयताम जाड्यांधकारापहा हस्ते स्फाटिक मालिका विदधती पद्मासने संस्थिता वंदेता परमेशरी भगवती बुद्धि प्रदा शारदा दत्वा सरस्वती देवी शुद्धा गुण्या कौम्यहम पाणिनी प्रवेशाय रघु सिद्धांत So yesterday we looked at this sutra after Tulyasya Prayatnam Savarnam we looked at Anudit Savarnam Se Chapratya Let me fit the screen So Anudit Savarnam Se Chapratya That's what we saw And Pratya is what? Pratya is Pratiyate Pratiyate Vidhiyate Iti Pratya It's a wherever you see a Vidhi that is called as a pratyaya in only in this sutra in this sutra and thereby a pratyaya and a pratyaya will not go with udit sorry anudit it will not go with anudit what it goes with is it goes with uh, uh, it goes with uh, an it goes with an and see an udit savarnasya cha pratyaya an and udit are two different sanyas given in this sutra in the sanya prakaran it will not go with Udit. Apratya will not go with Udit. Apratya will go only with An. Therefore, Udit is even when it is a Pratya as a Vidhi in a Sutra, even then Udit will be Sanya. That if Ku, if you see Ku, Ku, Chu, Tu, Tu, Ku, then Udit, which is a Pratya or an Apratya, it is irrelevant. Whatever is Udit, that will, that uh, whatever has Ut as it, that will be the Sanya Udit. For what? It will stand for Savarna. All Savarna it will stand for even if it is a Pratya. Whereas An, which is an Apratya, which is Avidhiyamanaha, that which is Avidhiyamanaha, An, that alone will be the Sanya for all its Savarna. That is the Sutra here. And uh, Savarna, what is Savarna? Savarna Sanya was given by the earlier Sutra. Tulyasya Prayatnam Savarnam. Asya and Prayatna should be same. And yesterday after the Patha, there was a prashna that ku, when you say ku, ku will stand for kakara swasya and savarnasya sanyasya, ku udit, udit sanyasya. So how is ku and udit gets an udit sanya for itself as well as for its savarna? Because its savarna is what? Savarna asya and prayatna should be same. Savarna and vidha savarnim, mutually they will be savarna. However, there Asya is taken and even in Asya, technically Asya is also not taken. If you take Asya, uh, Akuha Visarjaniya Nam Kantha, the Sutra is Akuha Visarjaniya Nam Kantha. So not only Ku, A is also there. So Akuha, Akuha Visarjaniya, Hakara and Visarga will also be included. So Akara, uh, A, uh, Hakara and Visarga all will become Savarna of Ku, which is Ka. Kakara and Ka Varga, all this. So it will not be that way. Uh, only the Varga co consonants are taken. Therefore, Ka, Kha, Ga, Gha and Nya, not the others, even in Asya, not only Asya, Prayatna is not taken, Abhyantara, Yatnaha is not considered, but for Savarna, for Ku, Ku, Chu, Tu, Tu, Pu, only Varga, Varga, uh, pancha, all the five letters are taken, Panchamaha. So thereby, who will stand for Ka Varga, Chu will stand for Cha Varga and so on. And all itself as well as all the other four class consonants will get the Udit Sanya by this Sutra. And in the end we saw Yavalaha. In the Yavalaha, Ya, Va, La, Yakara, Vakara and Lakara, they, they are Dvidha. They, they are divided into two. And the Savarna is divided into Savarna are what? Yakara and Hya, nasalized Yakara, Vakara and nasalized Vakara, Lakara and nasalized uh, Lakara. Each for, they will have Savarna for each other respectively. And Tena Anunasikaha Te Dvayor Dvayoho Sanyaha. Therefore, they will stand for Anunasika also, Dvayo Deya, to each of Yakara, Vakara and Lakara. Ha and uh, Ha and Ra, Ha and Ra. Uh, uh, refa, refa and her, R, R does not have a R, there is no R, 
there is no nasalized refa and there is no nasalized hakara and others also some of these consonants do not have the nasalized we will see when we see examples. Now an example taken is a samasa. This is a samasa. Sudhi is what? Sushtu dhi. Sushtu dhi or shobana dhi is sudhi. So this is what? This is shobana sushtu. Sushtu dhi. Dhi is three linga. Dhi means buddhi. Dhi, sushtu or shobana. Shobana dhihi. This is the meaning here. And what is this? This and upasya. What is upasya? Now this is these are not words in a sentence. This is a samasa. So sushtu dhi is shobana dhi is sudhi. That is sudhi equal to sudhi. And taihi. And tabhi. So tabhi upasya. Upasya. So one who is upasya, worship worthy. How through the through a sushtuji one should be with a pure mind, with a pure intellect, pure mind, one who is worship worthy, he'll become what? Sudhi plus upasya, sudhupasya. In the sandhi, that is the example here. And in derivation, this is not a complete example. This is a, one of the steps in the prakriya, and there sudhi and upasya, the example is given as to there is a sutra applicable now. There is a sandhi sutra ap applicable because in between ikara of ji, sudhi and upasya's ukara there is a sandhi and that sandhi comes by what sutra we looked at yesterday i mentioned it as an example eko yanchi so eko yanchi sutra applies here ikaha ikaha sthane in the place of ik there is a yana adesha now yan yan is what yam yan is a pratya and ika is a pratya therefore ik is an apratya and thereby when although it is said ik, ik, it, ik is what E, U, R, and R. These are the four letters included in ik. And yan is ya, var, la. Yeah, I mean, I'm saying ya, var, la for ucharana. It is yakara, vakara, refa, and lakara. Now, when this, these four, any of these four is preceding ach, achi. We'll see in the Sandhi Sutra, in a few sutras, we'll see in the today's or next pata. What is achi? Achi is a, when ach follows, when a vowel follows. When a vowel follows what? When a vowel follows ik, then yan should be the adesha. This is the sutra which, which is invoked here. So when sudhi upasya comes in, then ikara is dhirgha. But e, ik has what? E, u, r, and r. This is e, e short hraswa ikara. And when hraswa ikara precedes an ach, ukara is a vowel, therefore it is an ach. This is an ach. But what about this ikara? Ukara is a vowel, all right. Therefore, achi pare. When ach, ach follows, then yan will be the adesha. Yan will be the adesha. But for when ach follows what? Ach follows ikara. That is the basic understanding because ik is there and ik when you expand in Maheshwara Sutra, ik pratyahara will stand for e, u, ru, and r. Then why is why is this sutra applicable at all? Eko yanchi because E is not preceding, ikara is not preceding, hraswa ikara is not preceding, the dhirha ikara is preceding. If ikara is preceding, then how is this sutra applicable? That is the question. And that is resolved by the current sutra, which is telling us that avidhya manaha an, avidhya apratya an is equal to avidhya mana an, savarnasya sanyasya. So an is the sanya for what? E is a sanya, E is a sanya. For in ik is a ik is a pratyahara. Ik is a pratyahara means it's a short form. And it is a short form that expands into e u ru ru from Maheshwara Sutra. And e is a sanya by by this sutra. An aniti sanya kasya sasya savarnasya cha. So sasya savarnasya cha when when it is an apratya. Therefore this sudhi in sudhi upasya the ikara is what ikara is dhirgha. And in the current sutra, this is a, a pratya and in the sutra, this eko yanachi. Eko yanachi, the ika is what? Ika ha stane. Ika is the is sashti ekochana. And sashti ekochana, we will see that sashti ekochana is a, what is called as a stani. Stani meaning that which stana ha asya asti, the stani. That which has a stana. That which has a place for which the something is ordained. A rule is ordained for something 
and that sthana asya asti iti this ikaha is ikha which is a sthani and sthani is for which takes an adesha or a rule and here yan is the adesha or an ordained rule which says that you substitute ik with yan therefore ik is being substituted and yan is the substitute therefore yan is a pratyaya but ik is an apratyaya therefore apratyaya ik which is an apratyaya an ik is what ik is nothing but apratyaya an because it is part of an and an is parenana karana therefore not a e u only but till haya varat lan the till lan sutra that nakara all of those are what those are included those will uh, that is an and that that is included in an pratyahara and ik is part of an therefore ik being a pratyaya an in the sutra iko yanachi e u ri ru will stand for ikara also e will stand for ikara also as well as all the other 17 uh, savarnas so savarnas also therefore e e kara in sudhi sudhi e kara is part of this e and therefore this uh, iko yanachi sutra is applicable and thereby this e will take yan adesha and in yan how it applies is much later we'll see in that that sutra yakara will be the adesha and yakara replaces this e and thereby e being replaced by yakara you will get sudhya sudhya and then upasya this will become sudhyupasya it will become sudhyupasya further further something is to be done that is a different uh, different story altogether how it is declined and all that but sudhyupasya will become a pratipadika which is a samasa samasa will get a pratipadika sanya and then however it declines but it is not a pada it cannot be used but it is in prakriya dasha further another example is given dadhi anaya dadhi anaya dadhi is curd anaya anaya is a uh, is a madhyama purusha ek vachana bring naya nidhatu naya will be to take you take and anaya means you bring you bring what do you bring you bring curd and in this situation there is a sandhi when you dadhi anaya can be said separately but then dadhyanaya it, when you make a sandhi it will become dadhyanya anaya dadhyanaya how do you get dadhyanya by the same sutra iko yanachi and how is it applying here this ikara here there is no doubt this ikara is what this ikara is ik it is an ik and here we don't have a doubt even if we didn't know the sutra uh, that anudit savarnasya cha pratyaya still we would not confuse this ikara to be any different than ik which ikara this dadhi ikara we would not imagine it is not ik because it is rasva ikara so but iko yan adesha should be there out of yan should i apply yakara this yakara vakara refa and lakara i i know through other sutras that yakara will apply let's say yakara will apply will yakara apply or ya kara apply or ya should yakara be uh, yakara be nasalized or not nasalized how do i know whether adesha is yakara or ya how do i know that and for that the sutra that we are looking at that says is it pratyaya or apratyaya this is a pratyaya this is not a this is what pratyaya it is it is pratyaya it is a pratyaya and because it is vidhiyamana and part of yan is also part of and because it is paranakara in the sutra it is lannakara in lannakara will include yan also and therefore ya va ra la these are part of their pratyaya and being pratyaya it is not an apratyaya and therefore ansanya this swasya savarnasya na bhavati swasya savarnasya cha na bhavati only swasya bhavati therefore it will apply only for here so will the un in this yan yan which is part of un which is a pratyaya and will stand only for itself not for its savarna thereby the adesha will be here natu here it will not be a anunasika here but it will only be a ananunasika here so say only because it is a pratyaya therefore you get dadhya anaya not uh, the dadhyan dadhyanaya it is not nasalized 
So here you get Dadhyanaya, sorry. Dadhyanaya, this is the Sandhi here and this is the, in the sentence. So therefore, uh, this is how you make a differentiation between Pratyaya and Apratyaya and see whether or not the Pratyahara which is given, Pratyahara which Pratyahara, An Pratyahara, part of An Pratyahara or An itself, whether it is An or part of An, whichever letter is ordained or not ordained, you have to inquire into and thereby see in each and every sutra whether that An or part of An, an meaning the all the An letters, whether An is Vidhyamana or Avidhyamana. If it is Avidhyamana, then it will stand for itself, Sasya and Savarnasya. If it is not with uh, Avidhyamana only then, if it is a Pratya means Vidhyamana, then it will not stand for its Savarna, it will stand only for itself. Okay? Further, next sutra says, Paras Sannikarsha Samhita. Paras Sannikarsha Samhita. This sutra. So, heading. So this sutra, Parasannikarsha Samhita, says what Paraha, Paraha, Paraha Sannikarsha, Paraha Sannikarsha Samhita, Samhita is Trilinga, Samhita is the Sanya, it's the Sanya Sutra, Samhita is a Sanya given a name, given for what? Paraha Sannikarsha, Sannikarsha, what is Sannikarsha? Sannikarsha is explained by the Vritti. Varnana Patishaitaha Sannidhi Samhita Sanyasyat. What would be Samhita Sanyaha? Something would be Samhita Sanya. What would that be? Sannidhi. Sannidhi, Sannidhi, the association, close proximity. And close proximity is not, need not be in writing. In writing, for example, uh, we have, we have these words. Something happened. Okay. So when we write something, let's say Shri. So Shri Shankaracharya, we write Shri Shri Shankara, let's take Shri Shankara. So Shri Shankara, we say Shri Shankara. Shri and Shankara, if you separate it out, you may write this. Shri Shankara, writing is okay, although uh, there should be no space in pronunciation. But writing wise, you can put a space, it is understood. Why? Because if there are huge words, let's say there is a long samasa, if you read Kathabhashya, you will see a, uh, one and a half lines of one samasa single. It's difficult to pronounce that in one breath, especially for untrained people. So what happens? So you split it out. You, you split it out and to give clarity as to what are these different padas in it, you uh, split, split the words. However, they have samhita, in the, they, they'll get a samhita sanya is what? Sannikarsha is there. Sannikarsha is there in pada, in a Pada Sannikarsha is there, there is close proximity in pronunciation though. You cannot say Shri Shankara. Why? Because Shri and Shankara, if you utter separately, Shri is what? Shri is feminine. Shri would become feminine, Sri Linga, Sri Linga, Sri Linga Ek Vachana. It will become Sri Linga, Prathama Ek Vachana and Shankara is what? Linga. Prathama Ek Vachana. What is the sambandha between Shri and Shankara? Shri is Lakshmi. And Shankara is Shiva. What is the Sambandha there? Are we saying Shri Shankara Cha? No. We are saying Shri Yukta. It is a Samasa. It is a Samasa Madhya Pada Lopi. It is Shri Yukta. Shri Yukta ha Shankara ha. Shri Yukta ha Shankara is what? Shri Yukta Shankara. Shri Yukta Shankara it will become as one word. And then this Madhya Pada Lopa is made. Shri. It will be dropped. Yukta will be dropped and you will get Shri Shankara ha. So when you pronounce it, there is Sannidhi. The Sannidhi is in pronunciation. It is not in writing. It need not be in writing. I am not saying it is not. It should be. But then if for clarity we uh, split the words in writing. However, in pronunciation there is Sannidhi. And that Sannidhi close proximity. What is this Sannidhi now? Uh, can I say Shri Shankaraha and still say Sannidhi is there? Or should I say Shri Shankaraha? Or should I say Shri Shankaraha, what is that Sannidhi? Sannidhi is, yesterday we saw, we, uh, before that we have seen Ekamatra, Dvimatra and Trimatra. All these three matras is Pluta. Two matras is a time taken to utter a 
Dirga and Hraswa is uttered by a single matra. And also yesterday we saw that Hal consumes some time you need to pronounce. A consonant consumes time. What is that? That is a half consonant time. And up to half consonant time is up to. Up to that is, is a Sannidhi. So less than half less than or equal to, you can say extend it and say equal to, up to half matra pronunciation gap or some because uh, to shift the sthana and prayatna when you pronounce a letter after letter then that time some time may be consumed and that time consumed is okay between Shri and Shankara for example or between sh, Shakara and Akara or in sh, sh, sh and um, this Nyakara, Kakara, all this Nyakara, Kakara, between these whenever you are uttering words Shri Shankara, that time whatever gap is taken, that gap should be technically be up to or less than half a matra. That is Sannidhi and that is called as Atishaita. Atishaita is adverbial Atishaita and as in Atishaya Yatha Bhavati Tata, that kind of uh, Sannidhi should be there. It should be extreme. Uh, the the, the uh, gap should be less. There should be pronunciation in pronunciation. There should be extremely less gap. And that Sannidhi, that association is called as uh, Samhita. You get a Sannid, Samhita Sanya. Samhita iti Sanya yasya yasya saha Samhita Sanya. That is called as Samhita, san, samhita san, Sanya. That is called Samhita. That is Samhita is the name, Sanya, given to this Varnana Matisha. Then which Varna? Now the Varna which comes in association, they are called as Samhita. Varnana Matisha is Sannidhi. That association is called as Samhita. And there, uh, this in the Ashtadhyayi, you will see Samhita Yam Vishaye. In a Vishaya Saptami, Samhita Yam is an Adhikara. If you look up your Ashtadhyayi, in the sixth chapter, in the Sandhikarya, it will become more clear. There is an Adhikara called Samhitayam. Samhitayam, there are two. One is in the eighth chapter and one is in the sixth chapter. You will see Samhita. Uh, Samhita is the, uh, just a second, let me tell you the Sutra number in, in case any. So, 6172, sixth chapter, the first Pada and 72, that's a large Adhikara, goes till 158 Sutra. Uh, that is the Samhitayam. Samhita Vishay. When there is a Samhita. And Samhita here, for which it is not mentioned. So it can be for any Varna. It is mentioned in the Sutra Vritti, which says Varnanam. And Varna is what? It can be a Vyanjana Varna or it can be a uh, Swara Varna. Therefore, for both, Samhita is for association of a vowel and consonants also. Any which way. That association. Close proximity in pronunciation is called as Samhita. There is a shloka, when to have a Samhita. When should you have a Samhita? Means when should you have a Sannidhi? When it is a must and when it is optional, there is a shloka which says that Samhita eka pade nitya nitya dhatu pasargayo ho nitya samas se vakke tu sa vivaksham apekshate. So Samhita, Samhita eka pade, eka pade in a single pada, single word, like a samasa, even if it is a uh, uh, line long samasa, still there should be samhita. There should be in explaining, we can split it and explain, but in pronunciation, samskritam, samskritam samyakritam padam will be that which is pronounced without breaking this sannidhi. So, ekapade, in one word, samhita is what? Nitya. Samhita is three linga, therefore nitya. It is, it is mandatory. And nitya dhatu upasargayo ho, dhatu upasargayo ho madhye between a dhatu, a verbal root and upasarga, its prefix, it is nitya. So when you say uh, earlier the sun plus ni here or earlier what we saw that sun in Gita we saw sun plus jan, sam, sam plus jan, sam, sam jan you cannot say that makara will take uh, whatever in samhita we say, whatever sandhi happens. That Sandhi will happen, you cannot break some and Jan. So Samyak Janyam should be Sanjanyam. So it, it cannot be Sam Janyam. So there, there it is Nitya between Dhatu and Upasarga. The Samhita is Nitya. Samase, same, Samase Nitya. In Samasa also it is Nitya, this I already mentioned. 
Vakya tu, the only option it is in Vakya, in a sentence when somebody is talking, that time Vakya, on the other hand, Vakya tu sa, sa is what, sa samita, vivaksham apekshate, it expects a vivaksha, vivaksha is what, vivaksha is vaktu vichcha, vichcha, there is a desire to state something, intended meaning is there to be conveyed in a sentence. And based on that intention, one uses a sentence, one pronounces a sentence. Therefore, vivaksha is that intention, it expects the, there is an expectancy of dependency, there is a dependency of the intention. Based on the intention, one may make this samhita or, or drop this samhita, why? You, in a sentence. But in that sentence, if one is using this dhatu upasarga madhye and ekapada and in samasa, it should be nitya. So that is the Sutra Parasannikarshaha Samhita. Next Sutra says, Halonantara Sanyogaha. Halonantara Sanyogaha. This is also Sanya Sutra. It says, it says Halaha. Halonantara Sanyogaha. What it says, Halaha. Anantara Sanyogaha. Sanyoga is what? The Sanya. What is the Sanyi here? Sanyi is this Anantaraha Halaha. Hal is the Pratipadika. So this is first case plural of Hal. And this is also first case plural of Hal. So Anantaraha Halaha Sanyogaha. They are called as Sanyogaha. Hal is what? Consonant. We have seen. Hal is consonant. It's a Pratyahara. And from Maheshwara Sutra, Hal is what? A consonant. Hayavarat onwards till the last sutra hal. Not the last hal, but there, is, there are two hals. Hal, not two hals, two hakaras. And the last sutra is hal. Not that sutra alone, but by this hal is a pratyahara by which sutra? By the sutra we have see, seen earlier, adirantyena saheta. Adirantyena saheta is hakara of this Hayavarat sutra and lakara of the hal sutra, last sutra, you get a pratyahara adihi antena saha. Madhyagaranancha, Madhyagaranancha, Sasya Madhyagaranancha, Sanya Siu. It will become the Sanya. So it, will be, it is a Sanya for, uh, for Adihi and Madhyaga. So, Hayavarat onwards till this last Sutra Hal, you will get this Hal Sanya. There were consonant and multiple consonants when they come in Anantara, one after the other. And although here it is plural, even if you get two, it is called as a Sanyoga. If you get three also, you get a Sanyoga. You get more than three also, you get a Sanyoga. And what is that Sanyoga? Here it is plural and here it is singular. It is not Sanyogaha. It is Sanyogaha. By that we know that this hull, first hull and second hull, and if there is a third hull, fourth hull, whatever, in Krishnam, for example, we saw Krishnam. So in the example Krishnam, in the example, yesterday we saw, Krutsnam. Krutsnam. Here you see this Sanyoga is between what? There is a Nakara here and there is a A here. So, Am. And you separate this crew out. There is a Sanyoga between Takara, Sakara and Nakara. Takara, Sakara, Nakara have a Sanyoga. In Karsnyam, in Karsnyam, you have Repha, Takara, Sakara, Nakara, Yakara. And there Karsnyam. So, there is a Sanyoga between Takara, uh, there is a Takara, Sakara, Nakara, Yakara. Repha, Takara. There is a Repha, then there is a Takara, there is a Sakara, Nakara, Yakara. So it can be two, it can be more than two, and this is the largest, generally uh, it is said we have seen in this five letter Sanyoga. And what this means is that all of those five hal together, when they put together, this is called as Sanyoga. This will be called as Sanyoga. This entity will be called as Sanyoga. And not, not individually, not individually, only when they are together, they will get that, that entity which is put together, all of these letters put together, cons consonants put together, get this uh, Sanya Sanyoga. That is the Sutra, the Vritti says, Ajbhir Ajbhihi Avyavata Vyagvavahata Hali Sanyoga Sanya Sihu. Ajvi, this Ajvi actually it should have taken a Sanji, Sandhi and by Sandhi it would have become Agvi, but here for uh, clarity the Sandhi has not been made. So what it says, Ajvi, Ajvi is Ajis, this Ajis, Ajis, 
something wrong just a second okay fat fingering ajvihi ajvi is what tritiya bahuvachana and this is what ach and bhis pratyay is there bhis is bhis pratyay is there bhis becomes bhi tritiya bahuvachana ach is a vowel ach is a pratyahara and it stands for all the vowels so ajvihi avyavahata avyavahata is not yavahata is what interlinked sandwiched so something is sandwiching uh, the hull something is sandwiched i think there is a typo here just let me check so hala so so, so there is not is hali sorry therefore i think as humbled a little so ajvihi avyavahata halah ajvihi avyavata halah sanyoga sanyasyu that is the vritti not halihi halah so this ajvihi avyavahata halah avyavahata plural it is what do ajvihi avyavata halah those hulls which are not interlinked or sandwiched by vowels by vowels there should be no vowels in between only then it can be called as a sanyoga if you, if because see here what it says anantara anantara means that following following halah all these following each other when you say following each other for example lakshmana vidya lakshmana followed rama into the vanvasa he followed him to vana when he was following there was sita in between a jiva also follows parmatma but there is maya in between maya blocks the parmatma darshana for a jiva for lakshmana is a given as example lakshmana wants to see parmatma rama lakshmana being the jiva he is following he is following rama all right but still anantara anantara still what there there is sita in between there is maya in between and here this ajvi ajvihi avyavahata should not be interlinked by anything only then so immediately following should is the meaning that halah anantara is immediately following that that kind of an association between hal is called as a sanyoga therefore sanyoga sanyasyu only those not not when vowel is interleaving if vowel is interleaving then what you get is this samhita you get a samhita anything vowel is interleaving you get a samhita samhita is possible sanyoga is not possible so between only when a consonant follows another consonant or multiple consonants follow a consonant without a vowel interleaving then that is called as a sanyoga that is this sutra artha last sutra in this prakarana is supting antam padam supting antam padam here the sutra says supting antam padam sup so vritti is what this is sup sup what are the padas here in the within within the sup thing antam padam and what is sup sup is a pratyaya thing is what thing is a pratyaya by how do we know this this will come later in the second chapter i don't have the ashtadhi open and i don't want to spend some time here but those who are interested you can look up the uh chapter fourth chapter 412 so i just mention this subant sup is what by the you look up sup sup is the pratyaya su au jas swaujas etc the there is a uh, all of that the uh, sutra is 412 and then thing how do you know it is a pratyaya tip tas ji etc and so on there is a sutra in the third chapter धातु अधिकार सूत्र थ्री फोर थर्ड चैप्टर थ्री फोर सेवेंटी एट आई थिंक थ्री फोर लेट मी क्रॉस चेक बीन लॉन्ग आई एम नॉट यूज दूत्र पॉट अपर लॉन्ग सो थ्री फोर सेवेंटी एट यू लुक अप वन सूत्र गिव्स दी एंटायर दीज आर वॉट सुपेज आर ट्वेंटी वन प्रत्यास फॉर फॉर for a pratipadika to be added to a pratipadika to decline a pratipadika and these are what these are 9 plus 9 18 18 um, parasmai padam pratyas and there are 
आत्मने सॉरी नाइन एंड नाइन नाइन परस्मय पदम एंड नाइन आत्मने पदम प्रत्यय पुट इन वन सूत्र सिप्त जे सिप्त स्थ इत्यादि एंड हियर सुअस अमोक्ष इत्यादि देर इज अ सूत्र एंड बाय दैट दिस इज अ द्वंद्व सामस एंड इन द्वंद्व सामस आदि अंतम जस्ट लाइक इफ यू हैव टू राइट लेट से देर इज मैथमेटिकली यू राइट ए प्लस बी एंड होल इन टू सी इफ यू डू दैट what do you get you get ab plus bc this is what you get sorry not ab plus bc ac ac plus bc so you get ac plus bc how do you get this by expansion similarly here there is an expansion expansion this anta is c which will connect to sup as well as thing so suban subantam tingantam this is expanded as subantam and tingantam so you'll get what subantam subantam And tingantam will go sumantam, tingantam, padam. This is what you will get. And in a samasa, this, these two will combine and become sumantam, tingantam will become suptingantam, padam. So padam is the sanya given. Padam means the declined word. The declined word padam is a sanya for what? For this, so we say, how do we get the meaning? Padam is the declined word by this sutra. This is one of the definitions. There are other definitions of padam. Uh, in Sandhi, we'll need a lot more of them. We'll see. Uh, but padam, one main sanya, padam is for what? For sup and ting, not the pratya. Subantam and tingantam. The words ending in sup, sup ante yasya, that subantam. Here also, sup ante yasya, sup pratya ha, sup pratya ha. अंते यस्य तत् यस्य पदस्य दिस विल बी पदस्य तत् पदम सुबंतम पदम सो विल से तत् सुबंतम एंड सिमिलरली व्हाट थिंग प्रत्यह अंते यस्य तत् तिंगंतम दैट इज तिंगंतम दिस इज पदम सो पदम इज अ डेफिनेशन गिवन फॉर सुबंतम एंड तिंगंतम now there is a paribhasha sutra there is a paribhasha sutra there is a technical sutra which helps you interpret other sutras what is said there is a sutra which says pratyaya grahane pratyanta grahanam pratyaya grahane when pratyaya is mentioned then pratyanta grahana bhavati there is a grahanam bhavati when pratyaya is mentioned then it stands for its anta that is a paribhasha sutra pa paribhasha परिभाषा सूत्र इज नॉट अ व्याकरण सूत्र इन अष्टाध्याय बट इट इज अ सूत्र गिवन देर मे बी मे और मे नॉट बी एन अष्टाध्याय सूत्र परिभाषा सूत्र आर देर इन अष्टाध्याय ऑल्सो अ लॉट बट देन देर आर अदर परिभाषा सूत्र मेन्शन सेपरेटली टू एक्सप्लेन हाउ टू अंडरस्टैंड सम सूत्र एंड अ जनरल रूल डिराइव फ्रॉम दी सूत्र बट अनदर सेट ऑफ सूत्र विच एक्सप्लेन दिस प्रत्यय ग्रहण प्रत्यंत ग्रहण वेन प्रत्यय इज मेन्शन इट्स अंत इज ऑल्सो understood by that anta is understood not also anta is understood the, by that the sup supting antam padam sup is a pratya ting is a pratya thereby why is anta needed in sutra sutra should be very short and why did the maharshi parani maharshi waste this akara nakara takara and this anuswara why did he waste so much in the sutra If by a paribhashika sutra, if I had mentioned, if if I as in, if Maharshi had mentioned, sup, thing, padam, that would have sufficed because by sup thing, I would have got subantam thing antam cha, I would have got sup thing antam anyway. So even if the sutra had to be where to be sup thing padam, then by the paribhashika sutra pratyaya grahane pratyanta grahanam. i would have anyway got supting antam padam then why did panidi maharshi write this sutra in this manner write or utter this sutra in this manner why did he create obviously he knew all this so there has to be a reason this is the shraddha in the sampradaya and we understand from the sampradaya why did panidi maharshi do something that he did we may not understand everything he was bhagwan himself really he was shiva himself otherwise it's not possible to put the entire All the Vedika and Laukika words into a mere four thousand sutras. So he had that kind of buddhi. Even if you don't consider him as Bhagwan, he was blessed with that kind of buddhi where he could bring this out. 
in 4000 sutras the entire language entire pada shastra so therefore he knew all this and we have to understand the sampradha explains this that elsewhere you will see in paribhashika in sanya sanya sutras this is the sanya sutras elsewhere in sanya sutras you will see that when some word is mentioned a pratyaya is mentioned then pratyaya grahane pratyanta grahanam is not nitya it may not apply in some cases therefore although this paribhashika sutra can apply it may not bring out the same meaning so for clarity he had to say not supting antam padam but he had to say uh, not supting padam but he had to say supting antam padam thereby you uh, you can see so i'll remove this i had mentioned it only to clarify that that could have been said but the reason he did not do that even at the cost of so a few more letters he wanted to bring out clarity and he wanted to indicate by this that other places this pratyaya grahane pratyanta grahana will not happen in some cases the example is given i'll not go into that sutra but there is one sutra in uh, uh, i think the first adhyaya itself earlier initially itself you will get in the uh, ee rude uh, so there is a sutra uh, 111 so ee rude dvachanam pragruhyam so there dvachanam is mentioned and dvachanam is the sanya for pratyaya it is a pratyaya it stands for pratyaya and when pratyaya is mentioned pratyaya grahane pratyanta grahanam so that ee rude e dvachanam pragruhyam so ee rude i'll just give up na nitya i'll say it is not nityam why because the sutra 111 eid ud eid ud ed dvivachanam pragruhyam pragruhyam is the sanya there this is not uh, the of the of our interest our uh, interest is not in this sutra i just want to mention this dvivachanam here this dvivachanam does not stand for dvivachan is a pratyaya it does not stand for dvachanantam it does not stand for dvachanantam by this pratyaya grahane pratyanta grahanam dvachanan dvachana grahane dvachanantam grahanam will not happen here here it is not nityam this is the example given na nityam and that is known how is this known this is known the you can understand this sutra only because of this sutra supting antam padam see that is the extension supting antam padam it is said here why antam is said by this antam you know that dvachanam will not be dvachanantam this is the brilliance of the maharshi so this is the sutra and uh, i think we seen the vritti uh, we have not seen vritti is subantam tingandancha pada sanyam sya subantam so sup will expand into to this a plus b into c will be ac plus bc similar to this sup thing antam will be subantam tingantam cha dwandva samasa pada sanyam syat that will be will get the sanya pada padam padam is the sanya for what subanta and tinganta subanta is what a noun and tinganta is what tinganta is a verb so nouns and verbs are called as padam this is the meaning of the sutra it is sanya prakaranam this is the section on sanya this is not the only section on sanya this is the main section on sanya uh, and there may be sanya spread here and there lagu takes some in some together and groups them here and we'll see in the next part we'll see the achsandhi prakarana next achsandhi the sandhi between vowels we'll see in the next part dhritavasane natarajarajo नादकापंचवारम उधर्तु काम सन कादि सिद्धांतर्षे शिव सूत्र सॉरी आई डिट सी दि स्क्रीन आई एम सॉरी आई डिट इफ देर आर क्वेश्चन लेट मी लुक अप